Hi everyone, today we have Andrew Oranger from the Foundation Program at Maastricht University and he's going to share a little bit about the program with us. So take it away, Andrew. Uh, thanks, Christina, for the introduction. So a uh, bit of a unique presentation. Um, I will talk to everyone a bit about Maastricht University. We're a research institution located in the most southern point of the Netherlands. Some people call it Holland. Um, and I work for a foundation program. You might not know what it is, but if you're an international student or you work with international students, it's something you probably should know about in case your student is interested in attending school um, abroad and specifically in the Netherlands. So here's a wonderful, beautiful view of uh, part of the university campus. That's the law faculty and former provincial government building of Maastricht. Um, and as you can see, we're the only place in the Netherlands that is not flat. <laughs> so it's quite a unique spot. Um, so a little bit about what I'll talk about today, tell you about Maastricht University, um, talk about why a foundation program may be beneficial, talk about the curriculum at a foundation program, what we cover, how we help students, um, a little bit about how we're dealing with COVID, and then I'll answer any questions that Christina has. Maybe her colleagues have questions as well. Um, so about Maastricht University, the Netherlands is increasingly a, a hotspot for international students after the UK. That is because of the uh, high literacy and speaking rate in English in the Netherlands. It's actually higher than the United States. More than 90% of Dutch people speak fluent English, which makes an attractive spot for international students to go because there's so many English language programs. Um, and of all the 11 research institutions in the Netherlands, Maastricht University is the most international. Um, I guess I'm a testament to that. I'm American, I'm not Dutch. Um, but we're the most international university in the Netherlands. 55% of master's and bachelor's students um, come from abroad. And more than 40% of the staff come from abroad. And if you look at scientific staff, it's more than half. Or yeah. teaching staff, it's more than half. So chances are, your classes uh, are in English and they're with people from all over. At this point, we have more than 18,000 students from more than 131 nationalities, which I believe is most of them. And this year we're ranked the sixth best young university in the world by Times Higher Education. Um, we're the second to newest university in the Netherlands. We use a unique problem-based learning method, which means small class sizes instead of a traditional lecture hall that most universities use. And we're located in the city of Maastricht. Hey, Maastricht, if you can see can by I the map, you? is located way in the south of the Netherlands. It's actually, I only live about two miles from Belgium. I can walk to Belgium from my house um, and about a 30 minute drive from Germany, which makes it unique um, because, as the most international university in the Netherlands because there's so many languages around here, French, German, and Dutch. Um, English is a prevalent common language to communicate. We have 19 English language bachelor programs. The vast majority of them are in English, I believe only three or four are in Dutch. Um, we have support for international students. We're located in the heart of Europe, close to Cologne, a couple hours from Paris and London, Brussels, two and a half hours from Amsterdam. Um, so a really central spot and we're, um, because of our international outlook, we're part of several organizations uh, like the World University Network, European University Networks that collaborate across borders. Uh, Maastricht, most Europeans will know, is the birthplace of the Treaty of Maastricht, which is where the Euro currency was created. So that also speaks to our European, European and international character. Um, and makes it a specifically attractive spot for international uh, students to come. So I'm, I'm talking to you about a foundation program. What is a foundation program? Why would my student need it? Why would I need it? Um, it's not actually a choice. Um, a lot of people ask, well, sell me on a foundation program, but it's a, a requirement for certain students who wish to study at what we call a research university in the Netherlands. Because a, batch of a Dutch bachelor's degree only takes three years instead of the normal four, um, students from most countries outside of Europe, this includes the United States, require a foundation program because their diploma is not equivalent to the highest level of Dutch high school diploma. 
And what a foundation program does, it, it's an extra year before the three years that helps them meet this diploma requirement um, or other requirements uh, for some students who need to get their English skills up. But basically, um, if you're from, to all the American people out there, if you're from the US, you need uh, four or more AP exams with a three or higher or an IB diploma in order to come in with an equivalent diploma. It doesn't matter what your SAT or ACT score is. Um, and for most students, that's not something they have um, or might not even be feasible at their school. So unless they go to a year at an American school and then transfer to Maastricht University, they would require a foundation program. Um, we give students a specific training for their chosen bachelor program and prepare students for success in Dutch higher education and at Maastricht University because Dutch higher education is much different um, than the American system. So our mission at the Maastricht University Foundation Program is that we're for motivated international students who want to do a bachelor's program, but they don't meet the admission requirements, meaning their diploma is not equivalent. Um, so quickly about the foundation program is we are one year full time study. So we go from November to July. So we're a little bit shorter than an academic year. We prepare now for 13 different bachelor programs out of the 19 at Maastricht. Um, and I think there's only 16 that are in English. Uh, we have four different pillars, which you can see here, content courses, academic skills, language training, and beyond the classroom. And of our students who pass, we have a 100% placement rating in bachelor program. About 75% of our students typically move from the foundation program on to a bachelor's meeting. They pass the program. Um, the program fee for the foundation program is 14,000 euros, which is more or less 14 or $15,000 um, or 12,000 students if a student is already a native or near native English speaker. So for American students, um, they wouldn't need to take the full, like any English classes that already fulfill that requirement. So the program fees a bit cheaper and it's a super international classroom experience. We typically have students from more than 30 non-European countries. Um, so these are the programs we train for. Uh, they're really specific. We have more about them on our website, but basically at Maastricht University, um, we're known for things like law, business, um, sciences and nutrition, and data science. Um, so if you were ever interested in knowing more about these programs, visit our website and you can see. But basically here you have um, three tracks. The students who are in the first track take a basic math course. In the middle, they take an intermediate math course. And on this end of business analytics, they take an advanced math course. Uh, I'll talk about more, more about that in a second. Um, so basically, based on your chosen bachelor track and your English level, you're assigned a curriculum at the foundation program. So every student has a different curriculum. Um, we do have lots of native English speakers. Um, so these students would take a different course. And then students who are really weak in English um, will have a different course than students who like are already okay. Um, and fulfill the requirement to enter, enter the university, but essentially we overqualify students so they can succeed in the bachelor's program. Here you have an overview of our curriculum. So basically students, they take a content course, um, which runs typically seven weeks or four weeks, depending on the period. So they all take a course called Intro to Europe, where they learn um, basically like how Dutch higher education works, history, science, about the Euro, and just get used to being in a Dutch classroom with a Dutch grading scheme. Um, and also utilizing the PBL method where they have to speak in class and not just passively listen. Mm -hmm. And then depending on their degree program, they take a research methods or critical reading course, and then a math course uh, based, which level is based on their bachelor's program. And then they have a degree specific course, which gives them an introduction to their program study and then a final project that's relevant to their program study at the end. Meanwhile, 20% of the time they're in academic skills training. So this gets students familiar with argumentation, note taking, summary making, referencing, presentation skills. This skills training continues into the bachelor programs. They also do them. Um, these are like, uh, instead of learning content, they're hard skills you can practice. Um, the expectations in the Netherlands might be very different from where American students or any students come from. And this kind of 
fulfills as a leveling practice so students know how to receive feedback, um, speak in front of a class more comfortably, et cetera. Obviously different cultures have different strengths. Um, so this helps students um, compensate for their weaknesses. And then we have a language training. So for uh, native speakers, basically until April, they don't have to do any of that. And then for after April, they take an academic writing course. Um, it's essentially an English course. And then all their students, they either prepare to take an IELTS exam and they get specific training in that, or if they've already passed, reached the IELTS level they need to, um, then they train for a Cambridge English course um, and a Cambridge certification lasts forever. So we overqualify them in English. Some of these students might be really good in English, um, but they still opt to have the, the Cambridge course. And then meanwhile, basically, uh, we help students adjust to life in the Netherlands through academic advising activities. Um, they're basically a full Maastricht University student. We're an in-house foundation program, so I work at Maastricht University. Uh, I also teach courses to bachelor students. Um, I'm not just a, a, a recruiter, marketing person, but I'm an educator as well. Um, and everyone in the foundation program kind of um, is heavily involved in the university additionally. Um, here you can see one of our cool old lecture halls. It's in a monastery. This is really common in Maastricht. Um, there's lots of churches. The Spanish were here. Um, so they left them vacant and we turned them into classrooms. Here you can see a little bit more about the curriculum. So you can see all the bachelor's programs, what math level they take, and then their respective uh, degrees specific course. I actually teach the intro to economics course that international business and economics students take. Um, before they go into the School of Business and Economics. And then academic skills, we talked about that. English training, we talked about it. Um, so just how to apply to the foundation program. Um, actually, applications to Dutch universities can be pretty complex because they use a website called StudiLink, um, which is hard to access if you're not already living in the Netherlands, but we understand that that's difficult. So our process is a bit easier. Basically, you just have to email us or go on our website, send us your high school diploma, your grade list with English translation, um, proof of English level if you're not a native speaker. Um, near native speakers, so someone who receives a seven and a half on the IELTS or equivalent and above will also be exempt from the English requirement. Uh, a curriculum vitae, a resume, whatever you call it. Um, a motivation letter, and we have prompts for that. Uh, a choice for one of our bachelor programs, and this is really important because when we decide, when the admissions committee decides whether you're admitted in the foundation program, the bachelor's program is also deciding. So they conditionally admit you to their program on the basis that you pass the foundation program. And then a passport copy. Um, our deadline for visa seeking students has already passed. So this is all students uh, who would enter this November, um, who need a study visa in the Netherlands. But if you have a European passport, um, the deadline isn't until September 15th this year. Um, so there's still time to apply if you know someone who has a European passport or a Dutch residence permit. Um, so if you're a non-native speaker, in order to enter into the foundation program, we have quite a high English requirement. Um, for these programs, it's a five and a half IELTS or equivalent. And for the more speaking intensive programs, more liberal artsy programs, it's a six or higher. That's because the bachelors require half a point higher than those typically. So the ones that are more math economics based require a six minimum. So you need to get it up to a six before you enter. That's a requirement of the program. And then the other ones might require six and a half. Um, we talked about the program fee, but what's really appealing is the bachelor's degree afterwards is only three years. And if you're non-European nationality, the bachelor's degree only costs 8,000 euros per year or 10,900 euros per year. Um, and to Dutch people, this seems obscene, like it's a lot of money. But actually, if you compare it to American universities, it's quite cheap, respectively, and might even be cheaper than your in-state institution. Most of our programs that we train for cost 8,000, so the 10,900 is 
for programs that are a bit more resource intensive. Um, and if you combine that all together, it's, it's not that much. Um, additionally, Maastricht University offers scholarships for students who are seeking them. Um, so that could be very useful as well. And if you have a European passport, it's even less. It's less than 2,000 euros per year. Um, so a couple questions because of the COVID situation. Um, I guess in Europe, things were really bad, then they were good, then we had more cases again because people went on holiday. So in the Netherlands, our research institutions, our highest level of university, what Maastricht University is, we don't decide the plan. The government basically tells us what we're gonna do. And all the universities do the same thing. And they said on campus when possible, online when needed. Um, so what does that mean? We have kind of a hybrid learning system. As much as we can have students in the classroom, um, face to face, we will do that. But we have to maintain a meter and a half, so six feet ish, socially distanced. Um, normally our class sizes are about 12 students in the whole university because we have these small PBL sessions. Um, so the lectures are less common at Maastricht University. Those were easily put online, but these usually bi-weekly PBL sessions um, have had to get smaller. So students who are in one uh, in-person PBL session with only five students or so in order to accommodate social distancing and then another one that's online. But we're not an online university. We're trying to maintain synchronous education, face-to-face uh, -face contact with professors and teachers as much as possible. Um, we're following all the guidelines of the National Institute for Public Health. And if anything changes, we adapt as soon as possible, basically from guidelines from the government and the university. Um, and at the FP in particular, because our students come from far away, we understand that it might be really difficult to arrive in Maastricht um, by the start of the program. So we do have a fully online option um, until January, 2021, which at that point, students need to be in Maastricht. Um, and if you can't arrive in Maastricht, Maastricht, we'll refund the rest of the program fee for the remaining months. What's an uh, interesting tidbit that happens uh, in the Netherlands and at Maastricht University is if you don't finish your program or you drop out, your, your, pro, your fees prorated and you're always refunded the remaining amount, which is different than American universities. So like um, if you decide to drop out three months in, basically the, your fee is prorated by the month. That's a legal obligation. Um, so that also helps, can help parents be confident that if students have issues, um, this is something that can be resolved. Um, and obviously we'll try to help students build community. We know it's hard moving really far away to the Netherlands, so far, land, far away place, but obviously um, our community is really international and there's lots, still lots of students in Maastricht. Our university still grew this year. Um, it's a student city of 150,000 people. It's really a college, I would call it a, a college town. Um, and it is, and um, we make sure students will feel welcome and accommodated in case something happens. Um, but the Netherlands um, is, is pretty safe. Um, so just kind of to sum up before I take some questions. Um, so why do the foundation program at Maastricht University? This is our new building, by the way. It was an old woman's prison, so that's why it looks a little uh, prison-like. But um, the inside is really beautiful. So if you do a one-year foundation program and a three-year bachelor, you get your degree in four years which might be less even than some other institutions. Um, students do typically finish in three years here. There's not this extension period that happens like at some American universities. Um, and you can save a lot of money that way and also have a really interesting uh, educational experience abroad at a really reputable institution. We have a tailor-made training program for Maastricht University specifically. So when our students come to our foundation program, we're preparing them to be students at Maastricht they know how Maastricht the city works, they know how the university works. And because we overqualify them, um, their success rate in their first year of their bachelor's will be much higher. The first year of the bachelor's here is difficult for certain programs. There are high fail rates um, 
more than 40% in certain programs. Other programs are not like this, um, but our students, we see they succeed because they know what's coming for them and they know what's expected of them. Um, and that's the point of the foundation program is to overqualify these students. We know that some stu like students who would need to do a foundation program aren't necessarily um, less smart or less motivated or less talented than any Dutch student or any other student who directly qualifies admission. It's just they've been disadvantaged by uh, a bureaucratic process, right? Um, so we want to get them over that hurdle, but also make them successful um, because it it's in our institution's uh, interest to have talented international students who come to Maastricht University. They get an introduction to the really unique problem-based learning system, which I kind of touched on, but it's the small scale setting where students, they work together to solve problems instead of the teacher speaking at them and then passively listening, they work together and um, ask questions uh, to solve these problems and then the retention of the information is much higher. Uh, because of this, it's small scale and a very student oriented approach and we are the most international university in the Netherlands. Um, and that's definitely something that I know most students would be interested in when they're making the choice to study abroad, that they're not just surrounded by Dutch people, but surrounded by like minded people who want to go explore Europe. Um, so to sum up, all these pictures were Maastricht, so I hope you could see how beautiful it was. We, we fight with another university city in the Netherlands called Nijmegen about who's the oldest. The difference is their whole city was bombed during World War II and ours is very much intact. So there's lots of buildings that are over a thousand years old um, and it's super beautiful. And if you ever have the chance, definitely come visit. So with that, I guess I'll take questions from you, Christina. Yeah, I do have a couple of questions. Um, so what about housing? Where are the students living that are, that are at Maastricht? Yeah, so I see a lot of uh, American admissions officers or recruiters, they talk a lot about um, housing and sports and stuff. The reason I didn't address it is because I'm specifically trying to give details about the FP, but it is an important question. Um, in the Netherlands, it's uncommon to have on-campus housing. We don't, Maastricht University has kind of different parts of the city that are campuses, but it, it's kind of uh, buildings spread out. UM does offer, Maastricht University does offer a guest house, but we help, we try to give students the resources to find housing um, on their own. Most students, uh, all first year bachelor students, they find housing um, on their own in the first year. There's no dormitories. International students, like I said, they often lived in a get, they live in a guest house, um, but our students never have problem finding housing and that's part of the soft landing we provide for them. So we give them a housing manual. Um, we give them the resources to search for housing. And yes, it can be difficult, especially in the Netherlands, but Maastricht's not Amsterdam, thank goodness. Um, so there's a little bit more supply and it's a lot cheaper. Um, most students for student rooms spend between uh, 250 euro and like 600 euro a month, depending if they have their own studio or they have roommates. Um, so the cost compared to the US for housing is actually actually very, very reasonable as well. Um, but there are a lot of private uh, student facilities. So there's like apartment buildings that they basically market just for students. Um, and the whole city center is basically just student housing um, because it is such a student city. Good question. So, and, and I would say in terms of the cost, I, I, I have always known that European universities for the most part have been really reasonably priced. And I think that's a big attraction for, for families who are interested and, and, and are, are open to the idea of, of studying internationally. And I think just the cost for four years at Maastricht is like Two, it would be two here, you know, I mean, including the room and board, you know, I mean, I think it's um, such a reasonable. Theme. Yeah, the room and board's even more reasonable because dorms in your yeah. first year, which you're obligated to stay in, cost so much money and here yes. you don't have that obligation. Yeah. Yeah. And I assume, you know, and thinking about the, this option of, you know, where there's not really a residential life piece, the students that would probably be best suited for, for the foundation program in Maastricht really need to be somewhat independent they need to be mature they need to be able to to take that leap to not have someone you know like a residential assistant like you'd have in a dorm 
you know, in the United States. Yes, they need for to be sure. Much Good more point. Um, independent. So I, 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 which I, you know, I think if they're considering institutions like Maastricht, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Um, one other question I have in terms of the foundation program. Can I add something really quick, Christine? Yeah, uh, absolutely. One thing I just wanted to add to that is we, we don't have residential life in the sense we don't have uh, dorms or residence halls, but we do um, have like a rec center mm -hmm. and student sports clubs and fraternities and sororities and all the above and like loads of student organizations. Um, but for sure, like uh, I'm the one who always wants to kind of do more handholding for students because I'm American and yeah. like I work with high school students and I feel for them but in um, in Europe it's very much like you're on your own um, figure it out or like good luck we try to be some place in the middle and and help students but yeah if you're a student who um, isn't independent it's not a great choice because even the study itself is very hands-off um, there's not a lot of assignments. Oftentimes you'll have one paper and one examination. That's your whole grade for a course. That's just the Dutch system. Um, so you need to basically keep yourself in check in order to succeed. Um, and yes, you'll have an academic advisor in the foundation program. And yes, it's more personalized. But once you get to the bachelor, um, it's, it's all odds are off if you can't um, keep, your, keep your academic studies kind of uh, in check. Yeah, and I think that that's, there, you know, there are certainly students who can handle that, but there are a lot who can't. So it's an important point. And I think that, you know, really you gave a very good overview of, of the differences in the Dutch higher education system in terms, and I, I loved that. Thank you for doing that, because I think there are some, a lot of misunderstandings or confusion about the differences between a U.S. university system and how that works in terms, especially in terms of the academic piece. Um, and, you know, for example, a place like Maastricht, that there's big differences in that. But I think um, for some students, they would really thrive in an environment like that, which is great. You know, I think that it's great to have this option. Um, when students choose their program, are, and you said during the foundation program, their, their course of study, um, you're preparing them for the bachelor's program in that course of study. How frequently, or is it even possible that somebody would change their mind? Or are they you come in, I know at most European universities, you're choosing as an incoming student, which also is very different than the US system where you have, you know, maybe your first two years to kind of test the waters and then declare a major. This is very different. So is it possible for them to change their mind or what happens? What's the scenario there? Also a really good question. So if you're in your bachelor's degree, like without a foundation program, it's really difficult to change your mind. You basically have to reapply to another program and start over again. Um, with the foundation program, we have a little bit of leniency. So in the, we don't encourage students to do this. We do encourage students to research into it. And every program has different admission requirements. They're not all the same. So that's why it also is a bit of a hassle because um, basically, we need to check that the student's also eligible for the new bachelor program they're interested in. For example, if they got into global studies, but then they want to do econometrics, maybe their math level wasn't where it needed to be. Um, so basically, in that first chunk, um, all the students have the same content course. So there is some room for change. Um, and then basically, after that, it's more difficult because students start taking particular tracks for their course and their eligibility is determined upon um, completing the foundation program for that track. So like if you see the four humanities ones, probably you could change from global studies to arts and culture and be fine because um, they have similar tracks or mm -hmm. from um, uh, maybe from business analytics to DKE, but it, it, it really just depends on if the bachelor's program agrees to it. Um, because you do need to have additional requirements before you even come to the foundation program in order to be um, maybe eligible for those programs. And usually that requirement is more a math or science-based one. Um, so if you have really good math and science scores, Pro, or math and science grades, it'll probably be easier for you to get into um, another program than if not. Got it. Um, is, it's, is it, it, it is a difficult thing for students, 
I think um, it's hard for us to show students that you really need to take this choice kind of seriously. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is some of the programs uh, have what's called numerous fixes, which means they only allow a certain number of students into the program per year. Um, so for example, international business has that, but economics and business economics does not. So some students might take that into consideration when applying, but they definitely need, do need to do their research. Um, and they need to be kind of sure of the direction they want to go with their study, um, although it can be difficult. Got it. For sure. And then one, one last question is, so with the admission process, are you seeing, well, I guess it's actually a two-part question, are you seeing many students coming to Maastricht for the foundation program after taking a gap year? Is that common? Do you have older students or you know, students who've done that? So yeah, um, our students are in the foundation program are typically around 18 or 19. Um, but we do have some like 20, 21 year old students or even students who did take a gap year. It is common. Also students finish their secondary education at different ages in different countries. Right. Um, so like it's all around young adults, but like we had a 17, you need to be 17 minimum, but we had a 17 year old student this year. Um, but we also had a 24 year old student, I think. So um, most people are kind of between that range. We've also seen students who went to a school maybe in the US or somewhere else, and then they decide they want to go, they want to go a different direction with their study. Maybe they studied business and they wanted to study law. And then for that reason, they came. Um, so it just depends on the situation, the student, where they're from, all these sorts of things. One unique thing is in Europe, recruitment and admissions are separated. So admissions is the people who do admissions would never talk to you. They only look at applications because they think it's a conflict of interest. So I actually don't look at applications myself. Um, but from what I know of our students, because I do teach them, yeah, some of them do uh, have taken gap years. And in particular, Amer we've had American students who, have, who had taken two or even three years off before they, they came to us. And that's one reason they were interested. Got it. And then just to clarify one final thing is just with the admission, with the application process. So it sounds like, you know, another big difference is the timeline for applying is very different than, than most you know, universities here in the U.S. students are applying by November 1st, December 1st of their senior year. It sounds like this is a little bit, this is a later process for some, but could students could, students could potentially go through that application process earlier if they were ready to. Yeah, of course. Like we start taking applications whenever. We even have a early action, early bird deadline. And students get a 500 euro discount in the oh, tuition nice. if they apply by April 15th okay. um, of each year. Um, but April 15th would be late in the US, right? Yeah. Even yes. our bachelor <laughs> programs for non-European students, uh, they have deadlines at earliest like January 1st, if it's a very selective program or like uh, some of them are... June 1st. Um, and for European students, sometimes they're August 1st. So there's only a month between the deadline and the first day of class. Um, yep. So yeah. this is common in Europe. Um, it's just a much different uh, process. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been incredibly helpful, Andrea, and you've, you've given not only just great information about Maastricht, but also just in general about the process and the differences with European universities and, and all of that in terms of the study. And uh, it's, I, I think, such a great option for the right kinds of students. So thank you for taking the time to share all of this. And if anybody has questions, please feel free to visit the website um, and check out the, the specific information about the different programs as well, because like Andrew said, it's really important that students do have a sense of what they're getting into in terms of their academic, chosen academic areas of study, because that's also a, a little bit of a difference in terms of uh, US-based education and the European institutions. So thank you, Andrew. I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, uh, thank you, Christina. Actually, I wanted to add one more thing. I totally forgot feel to free. mention. You can, so go ahead. In the Netherlands, we actually have two types of universities. I mentioned we're a research university. Another one's called a University of Applied Science. You'll see this all throughout Europe. Um, they have tiered systems for education, especially in the Germanic countries. Mm -hmm. So those universities aren't necessarily worse, but they can benefit students who kind of want a more traditional education setting, more similar to the U.S. where their hand is held a little bit more in terms of 
um, like there's more assignments, there's more skills based, more practical things. Um, and what happens actually is if our students don't pass the foundation program, we often send them to these universities um, because they do have similar programs and they take four years instead of three. Um, okay. So if you're, if you're wanting to stay in Europe, that's also a, an option for people. Good to know. Thank you for that. Well, thanks so much. And again, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to visit the website to learn more. And um, thanks for sharing all the good information and the great visuals too. It was, it was awesome. Yeah, anytime. Nice to meet you. And thank you. thanks everyone for tuning in on YouTube if you did so. <laughs> thank you.